Hello reward clinicians and welcome to another quick case review. I recently ran into a well-documented case on the web that I wanted to share with you. Dr. Mohamed Aldala is an endodontic resident in the Sana University in Yemen. Dr. Aldala, thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. It's great to be with you, Dr. Allen, and to have a chance to, be, to talk with you today. If you don't mind, I will walk us through this case that you kindly agreed to share with our viewers. And this is a case of a young patient with a history of trauma in a mandibular anterior sextant. Now, these anteriors were previously treated endodontically several years ago, uh, but they had recently become symptomatic, showing periapical lesions. And as you can see here, even at higher magnification, there is a little bit of a radiolucent line adjacent to these uh, root canal filled teeth that is not normal. Normal. Normally, you don't see that. So this increased contrast is indicative of something. And how do we arrive at this is uh, basically the whole uh, process by which uh, um, uh, Dr. Aldala went on to make a diagnosis. Uh, originally, extractions and replacement of all four teeth with implants were recommended by the patient's uh, general dentist. Is that correct, uh, Dr. Aldala? Yes. Of course, the first thing that we must look at when we see endodontically treated teeth with persistent infection are three common causes of this type of a persistent infection. And the first one is inadequate cleaning and shaping that results into residual microbes in the root canal that then find their way out due to poor obturation. And the second reason is uh, clearly missed canals. It's very common uh, in many teeth that have more than a single canal. And also, uh, lastly, uh, root cracks and fractures that cause also endodontic failure. Now, uh, which one is the cause is basically a function of a thorough clinical testing and evaluation to arrive at a proper diagnosis. Now, here a CBCT was taken to help make the diagnosis. And CBC teams are very helpful in cases where you're trying to uh, triage a retreatment for apico or uh, doing retreatment. Now, as you can see here on a sagittal section, uh, you can see that a root canal has been filled to the end. There is some periapical infection, but here at a higher magnification, you can see that there is a missed lingual canal in this central incisor or and this is also present in the lateral incisor. So clearly, these root canals appear to be filled to the end on a straight uh, facial periapical radiograph. But when you do the sagittal section using a CBCT, which is something that is you cannot do using a uh, periapical radiograph, uh, then you are able to see this missed canal that kind of explains and diagnoses the source of the problem. Here now is an axial section for uh, this patient. And you can see that the four incisors have had root canal fillings in there, but on the the, the three on the left, the uh, lingual canal has been missed, and it looks like the one on the uh, the right, the right lateral incisor, it is actually the buccal canal that has been missed, and the lingual has been filled. So, in each tooth, there is one canal that has been missed, which explains the source of the infection, the persistent infection, and the problem associated with these teeth. Now, what you did, Dr. Aldala, is you proceeded then as a result of this information to retreat these uh, not conventionally and non-surgically as opposed to go in there and do surgery. And as we can see here, there have been some restorations in there and um, uh, they're also inadequate. And you went in there and retreated them and here is the post-operative radiograph on the right side. And it does show that you managed to very nicely get in there, find the missed canals and treat it to the apex and address the patient's chief complaint in a uh, proper and adequate way. You also took a post-operative CBCT that we can see here shows how in an axial section, how originally we had all those missing canals in each tooth that was responsible for the persistence of infection. And now the tooth, uh, all of those, uh, all, both of the canals in each tooth has been treated appropriately. Now, this patient had a history of trauma, which is why these teeth were treated uh, non-surgically to begin with. But the reason the cases failed was because of inadequate cleaning of the main canal and missing that additional canal that is present in, in these uh, teeth. Now, Dr. Uh, Abdala, how what percentage of teeth um, have additional, what percentage of lower incisors, centrals and laterals, have an additional canal? Well, uh, according to literature, 40% of uh, lower incisors has 
have uh, two canals. Yeah, forty percent is basically uh, thirty to forty percent is what has been shown in the literature. So uh, that is that means that you know almost one out of three of your incisors, if not one out of two, has uh, a second canal that you need to look for. Now, a CBCT is an excellent tool for triaging persistent infections for uh, either retreatment or epicoectomy or extraction. Do you have any recommendations, uh, Dr. Adalo, for those who do not have access to a CBCT. Anyway, we can image uh, the the presence of a uh, of this uh, additional canal. Uh, I do a uh, shift uh, technique uh, with the X-ray uh, because if you have uh, have a good uh, sensor, good digital X-ray can show the second canals by shifting technique. Also, uh, during axis cavity, uh, I extend my axis in the direction of buccolingually where I go more lingually into, into the cingulum uh, to allow exposing any second canal if they are present there. Yes, the slob rule or same lingual opposite buckle, which means as you move the x-ray head, the, uh, the the canal or the shape that moves towards the same, um, the same angle that you're moving the x-ray head is lingual and the one that moves away from the head the direction to which you move the x-ray head is on the buckle uh, that rule is very helpful in determining the uh, the, the root uh, anatomy and seeing whether you have additional canals or a broad root which is really typical of having multiple canals in a single root a broad ribbon shaped um, roots often have more than one canal and this is basically something that can be found by palpating also the buccal lingual aspect of these teeth at the CEJ using a DG16 and the Donic Explorer. So the goal here is to find out how buccolingually, how wide these teeth are, and uh, you could do that by this kind of a palpation technique. Well, Dr. Aldala, uh, endodontic resident at Sound University, thank you so much for joining me and sharing your uh, case with our audience. Thanks to you, Dr. Allen. Really, it was great to talk to you. Thank you very much. Now, since we talked about these mandibular incisors with multiple canals, I also wanted to share with you a recent case that I did in a mandibular canine with a similar root anatomy. Now, mandibular canines typically have a single canal. However, also just like incisors, but at a lower percentage, about 10% of these teeth may have more than a single canal. And uh, where this additional canal is present, it's obviously very important to, to find it located and negotiate it all the way down to the apex to achieve pr uh, predictable and proper success. Now, this patient was diagnosed with a necrotic mandibular right canine. This area had been subject to trauma many years uh, previous to this radiograph, and multiple root canals had already been performed on the central and the canine on the other side, and this lower canine had now become necrotic as a result uh, uh, and had now some localized swelling and a little sinus tract. Now, in this case, an angled radiograph clearly showed the presence of two roots, and a CBCT was therefore not deemed necessary. Remember that you don't always have to expose a CBCT. It's only a diagnostic in addition to your basic, you know, common sense clinical tests. And here, uh, the, the, uh, the slob rule or basically an angled radiograph was clearly demonstrating the additional canal and therefore there was nothing much that could be gained from a CBCT. So endodontic access was then made in an oval shape in order to address the issue of finding the lingual canal. And then with the aid of the ESX orifice opener, the area was opened up using the um, ultrasonic tip E14 and D. Uh, I, was, I managed to kind of enlarge and trough and uh, find an adequate um, access coronally to both the buccal and the lingual canals. After their location, I instrumented them and enlarged them with the ESX uh, 35 file all the way down to the apex. And with the full and thorough irrigation, the tooth was necrotic. So after going through my negative pressure irrigation uh, routine and this infection with sodium hypochlorite, full strength of sodium hypochlorite, and then obturated both canals using hydraulic condensation with BC sealer with the matching BC cone of a 35 ESX cone. And as you can see, a large lateral canal was uh, also filled using this technique. And incidentally, the lateral canal was located next to the area where sinus tract was present, uh, confirming the source of the sinus tract. And this uh, tooth healed very well, and the sinus tract disappeared, and the patient's symptoms uh, were um, 
completely uh, under control. Now, uh, what's interesting is that this visit allowed me to have a five-year follow-up to an apicoectomy in the adjacent lateral incisor where I had myself performed the lid technique five years earlier. Now, this peak at the adjacent tooth validates the long-term reliability of this simple surgical technique of the lid technique and, um, you know, uh, it gives me an additional assurance about the com this combination technique of the lid technique of using the, RM of the syringable material with a putty on top as a reliable source of a seal in the long run with good success for cases. That will be the subject of other future tutorials as well. Now, I want to thank Dr. Aldala for sharing his case uh, with our audience. And for Rewaldendo, I'm Ali Nese, and I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Mm -hmm.